Dear Arthur, here is the box of fine, thin fish food you asked me to pick up at the foodway store on Lexington Avenue. It costs so much to feed your hungry fish that I think you should say to them, Swim south for the winter. I also bought French wine for the fish I promised to cook. Sincerely, Sonia. Well, it was at least felt right, yes? Yes, but here, here, let, let me get that for you. Using capital letters is important, too. Capitalization ah, is... Ah, capitalization, uh, communism. I don't pay much attention to politics. Sonia, using capital letters has nothing to do with politics. Using capitals in the right place is important to conveying meaning in your writing. For instance, spelled with a small or lower case C, mm -hmm. a civil war means any struggle between opposing groups of citizens within one country. But if you capitalize civil war, you have the specific war between the North and the South in the 1860s here in America. Ah. In fact, that's another example. North, as a general direction, is not capitalized. For instance, I drove north. Mm -hmm. But when it has specific cultural, social, or economic characteristics, or refers to a particular part of the country or world, it is capitalized. You see, the correct capitalization distinguishes what you're writing about. Yes, and the right wine distinguishes my fish from the rest. Capitalization sets off specific things from the common and general. It's what Shakespeare is to writing, what Mozart is to music. What Arthur is to men. Shakespeare did say, I, I am not in the role of common men. Ah, he was talking about you, right? Oh. My publisher once said, Arthur, some folks wouldn't capitalize their own middle names. Shocking. Now, when it comes to capitalization, seems to me you can count on three principles. First, whenever you're referring to a specific person, place, or thing, the word should be capitalized. For instance, Sonia and New York are capitalized, but woman and city are not. Second, whenever you're calling a specific person by a title or position, the title should be capitalized. Pope John, Governor Brown, Aunt Ella. Do not use a capital if you're referring to the general category, not the specific person. Popes, governors, ants. Third, use capital letters to begin written passages, sentences, quotations, the greetings and closings of letters. For instance, look at this letter to my publisher. Dear Mr. Edwards, the textbook is coming along well, and I think it is needed. Today I read in the newspaper, there is an urgent need for better writing skills in this country. You capitalize dear because it's the greeting of the letter. Mr. Edwards, of course, because it is a name. The and today are capitalized because they are the first words in each sentence. But notice that the word there is capitalized, although it comes in the middle of a sentence. That's because it's the first word of a quotation. There is an urgent need for better writing skills in this country. Finally, since yours truly is the closing of the letter, yours is capitalized. But remember, only capitalize the first word of a complimentary close. You can practice using each of the rules so you'll be more comfortable using them. They're in your workbook. Oh, that smells good. Where'd you get the recipe? From Father, but it's not quite finished yet. Mm -hmm. Get out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sonia said her father gave her the recipe. When you use words like mother, father, grandmother, or uncle, as if they were names, then they should be capitalized. Today, father taught me to make broiled fish. 
But when they are used with a possessive noun or pronoun, they are not capitalized. Today, Sonia's father taught her to make broiled fish. You capitalize the specific names of organizations and institutions, but not their overall categories. Central High School, Howard University, and the Peace Corps, but not high schools, universities, or organizations. For instance, I went to the University of Virginia for two years, but I went to the university for two years. You also capitalize days of the week, months of the year, and holidays, but not seasons. This year, Christmas falls on Tuesday in the winter month of December. Capitalize English and French as academic subjects. When the name comes from the countries, capitalize it when used alone or in combination. German, German beer. Geographical features, the Mississippi River, streets, Main Street, cities and towns, New York, historical events, the gold rush, governmental departments, Department of Labor, be sure to capitalize the titles of books, documents, works of art and music, films and plays. Notice that brief words such as with, of, and, and the are capitalized only if they come at the beginning of the title. How about cooking? Oh, <laughs> a subject fit for a king, but you, you don't, don't capitalize, capitalize it. it. You eat it. Mmm. Here, let me have your plate. Mm. Oh. So, specific titles or names of people, places, and things get capitalized. But general categories don't. Oh, uh -huh. Let's use some of the things we talked about to correct this letter you left me this oh, afternoon. Arthur. Oh, come on, Sonia. All right. Now, now, what's first? Oh, let me see. Uh, the date at the top, October 10th, should be capitalized. Right. Dear Arthur. Oh, dear should be capitalized because it's the greeting. Mm -hmm. Arthur should be capitalized because it's your name. Oh, I deserve it, too. Oh. Here is, here should be capitalized because it's the first word of the sentence. Uh -huh. Here is the box of fine, thin fish food. Wait, 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 wait a minute. What? Um, fine, thin is a brand name, right? The specific name of the fish food? Yes. Oh, so I capitalized it. Mm-hmm. Um, ask me to pick up at the foodway, foodway. Foodway is the name of the store, so it should be capitalized. Right. Foodway store on Lexington Avenue. Mm. Oh, and Lexington Avenue should be capitalized because it's the name of the street. Good. Now, let's see. Ah. It costs so much to feed your hungry fish <laughs> that I think you should say to them... Swim south for the winter. Oh. <laughs> that looks fine to me. Now, what about the first word of a quotation? Oh, even if it doesn't come at the beginning of the sentence, it should be capitalized? Right. And are you uh, thinking of south as a region or a direction? As a direction, so I guess it gets a small s. Good. And remember not to capitalize the seasons. December is capitalized, but not winter. Oh. Hmm. I also bought French wine. Oh, capitalize the F and the W. Oh, Sonia, you're right in capitalizing French, but wine is not a proper noun, so it doesn't use a capital letter. It's the same as um, Italian pasta. Oh. <gasps> How about some French pastry for dessert later? Only if you capitalize the French, just as you would if it were a subject in school. Oh. Back home, I took English, but I got better grades in science. Well, science, history, and other subjects wouldn't be capitalized, just language. All right, let me finish this letter. Also about French wine. For the fish, I promised to cook. Capitalize the closing. Sincerely. 
Sonia. Good. But you don't capitalize these dirty dishes. Ah, you wash them. I cooked. Enough here for a picnic tomorrow. How about it? Fish leftovers? Hmm? Uh, perhaps just a drive in the country. Okay. <sighs> I think we should have turned right somewhere back there. Uh, but the directions say, after you go right past the church, turn left at the first crossroads. Let's see those directions. Just as I thought, there should be a comma between the words right and past. How can you worry about commas at a time like this? Because it should read, after you go right, come up past the church, turn left at the first crossroads. See the difference? You mean, way back there where we turned left at the church, about ten miles back, we were supposed to have turned right? Yep. Oh. Never underestimate the importance of correct punctuation. Because of that lost comma, we are lost. Period. We're also out of gas. Exclamation point. Oh. It's nothing like 40 miles in the back of a chicken truck to give you a foul perspective on life. Now, we were talking about punctuation as a key to clear writing. You can think of a period as a, as a kind of final note to end a thought. When you're speaking, your voice drops off at the end of a sentence. You use a period the same way, at the end of a statement, a mild command, or an indirect question. Look at these sentences. My neighbor works in a department store. That's a statement. Call my publisher in the morning. A command. Some people ask why writing is important. That's an indirect question. It gets a period. It's important not to confuse statements with questions. He asked whether I wanted to see Europe or California. Is that a question or a statement? It's a statement that a question was asked, right? But if you wrote, would you rather go to Europe or the West Coast? Then a question mark would be necessary. In conversation, the voice goes up when you ask a question. When you write it, the question mark serves the same purpose. Now, there's also the exclamation point. I rarely use it in my own writing, because I don't often think in glorious, emphatic, or um, emotional terms. My life isn't all that exciting. But some sentences need exclamation points. The redcoats are coming. Or, watch out for that shark. Any sentence which is a strong command or sudden expression of violent or strong emotion. Let's try these sentences. We went to the movies on Saturday. The sentence is a statement, so it gets a period. He wanted to know if I liked the acting. Period. Because it's an indirect question. With Robert Redford. No punctuation, because it isn't a complete sentence. We'll talk more about sentence fragments later on. I have to say, it was terrific. Definitely an exclamation point. <laughs> oh, Freddie, how did the vacuum cleaner demonstration go? 
<laughs> Ready! With the modern convenience of the Acme Dirt Eater, you can turn the drudgery of cleaning in, in, into the misery of unemployment. Nobody bought one. Oh, look, Freddie, it wasn't your fault. <laughs> oh, well, you know that, and I know that, but Mrs. Jo... Freddie, what happened? Click. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we need to write a letter of complaint to those Dirt Eater folks. Y you mean I'm not fired? Of course not. Now we need to write down exactly what happened. And we'll need your help, too, Sonia. Okay. Let's date the letter first. Don't you need something to separate those two numbers? Oh, yeah, a comma. Do you know I once ran out of gas because I didn't have a comma? Keep your writing from ambling randomly across the page. We have punctuation marks, like commas, semicolons, colons, and quotation marks. They make the writing clearer. Often a natural pause indicates a comma. And when in doubt about the rule, you can read a sentence to yourself. If a pause would help the sentence make better sense, then a comma might be necessary. But there are guidelines that will help you decide when to use a comma and when it would best be avoided. You always use a comma, for instance, after the greeting of an informal letter. That works. A comma replaces and in a series of words. For instance, I felt confident, hopeful, happy, and secure. And that sounds better than I felt confident and hopeful and happy and secure. I passed a test of math, science, reading, and writing. The commas are used in dates and addresses in a sentence. Remember that the month and day go together, no comma between them, but there is one after the 12th. The house number and name of the street are also one item, no comma until after street. Use a comma between the city and the state. The same rule holds for the state and the zip code. They are one item and don't have a comma between them. Commas are also used to separate a phrase that isn't essential to the meaning of the sentence. When you see one of these phrases, you can tell that the information in it may be handy, but the sentence is complete without it. Take a look at this example. The Learning Center, an educational facility, is nearby. An educational facility describes the Learning Center, but doesn't change the meaning. Set it off with commas. Try this one. With the exception of several questions is not essential. The sentence would retain its original meaning. It was an easy test. But if you wrote, it was by no means an easy test, you would not use commas to set off the words by no means. They are essential to the meaning of the sentence. In deciding whether or not to use commas around a phrase, it sometimes helps me to think of the commas as hooks. If you could hook the phrase and lift it out of the sentence, leaving the original meaning intact, then you need those commas. But if you can't lift it out, don't use commas. You probably can hear the voice drop when you say the sentence. Do you need hooks to lift this phrase? Yes, because you could simply say, my typewriter is well suited to the job. Anytime you restate, define, or describe something like that, Set it off with commas. Where would the commas go here? Right. You can hook the phrase, an American author, because it is not essential. You can also hear the voice drop. James Mishner, an American author, won the 1948 Pulitzer Prize for fiction. What about this one? The man who lives next door raises pigs. 
no commas, because everything is essential to the meaning. We need to know which man raises the pigs. Would you need commas here? Yes. To say, our neighbor raises pigs, still conveys the meaning. Remember, think of the commas as hooks that could lift the phrase out of the sentence. Sometimes that part comes at the beginning of the sentence. Where would the commas go in this sentence? When I make more money, comma, we can buy a house. Introductory words are set off with a comma. How would you punctuate this sentence? After we save more, you can go back to school. After we save more, comma, you can go back to school. Sometimes there is just one introductory word, like uh, nevertheless, however, besides, finally. However, we never can predict what will happen. When you directly address the reader, you use a comma to separate the name. Look at this. Kathy, I will keep you posted on my plans. I think, sir, that you made a mistake. In a compound sentence, a sentence that could be two complete sentences, you have to place a comma between the clauses. Such sentences are joined by conjunctions. Words like and, but, for, not, or, so, and yet. Here is one example. I would like to find a job this fall, but I haven't made any applications. Use the comma only if both clauses could be complete sentences. Do we need a comma in this sentence? I could get a job in insurance, or I might find work in hotel management. Comma? Right. Because the sentence could be chopped into two complete sentences. I could get a job in insurance. I might find work in hotel management. The comma and conjunction can be replaced with a semicolon. But don't use both. OK. Dear Mr. Who is it? Mr. M.T. Brown. He's supervisor of consumer affairs. Uh. Now, you should use a colon instead of a comma after this opening. This is a formal business letter. Oh. Let's start out with the main thing we need to tell him. We have a complaint about your product, the Dirt Eater Vacuum Cleaner. Good. Now, the product is the same as the Dirt Eater Vacuum Cleaner, right? Yes. So you can hook it out and still have the sentence be correct. Which means... Ah, set it off with a comma. Right. The machine sputtered and sparked and smoked and blew dust and dirt and soot everywhere. That sentence is a little long. Mm -hmm. Let's take out some of those ands and use commas instead. Commas can be used to separate words in a series. Okay. The machine sputtered, comma, sparked, and smoked. Good. Now put a period there and start a new sentence. It blew dust, comma, dirt, and soot everywhere. Right. Now go on. Mr. Brown, your product caused us embarrassment. Put a comma after Mr. Brown because you are addressing him directly in this letter. Next, I want to tell him what some of the customers said, word for word. You have to set a direct quote off from the rest of your writing, so use quotation marks. Mm. Remember, Sonia, always put them around the words you have quoted directly. Um, a couple of ladies said, how can you sell such a thing? Oh. <laughs> Two customers standing nearby said, how can you sell such a thing? The quotation marks go around the exact words they say. Good. And I remembered to capitalize the first word of a direct quote. Right, and said the quote from the rest of the sentence with the comma after said. 
Since the customers asked a direct question, I used the question mark. And you always put the ending punctuation inside the quotation marks. Mm -hmm. The vacuum cleaner has the following defects. Remember, when you introduce a long series, use a colon. Oh, okay. But, Freddie, where is your list of defects? Uh, the defects are the fan, the brushes, the bearings, and the hose. The fan, the brushes, the bearings, and the hose. Now let's finish by telling him we refuse to pay for the shipment and that he can pick it up here. We refuse to pay for the shipment of Dirt Eater vacuum cleaners. And you may pick it up at our warehouse, 300 East Lexington Avenue, Lincoln, Illinois, 90414. I remember to put a comma before and, because that sentence could be two complete sentences by themselves. Fine, but look carefully at the address you typed. Use commas to set off the entire street address. 300 East Lexington Avenue. And use a comma between the city and state. Do I use one after Illinois? No, not between the state and zip code. Now, let's close the letter. Sincerely, Virginia Johnson, customer service manager. That's you. Add a comma after the closing, sincerely, and I'll sign it. Ah, <sighs> finished at last. A masterpiece. 